All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. I uh, just started up the recording here. We're going to be playing the Vanifar part list that has been um, posted by General Fireball. Um, they only posted the main deck, so we don't actually have the sideboard, but I put together a sideboard that I thought was pretty reasonable. Um, and then after this, we're going to be playing another version of Pod, which is uh, that my friend listed me the OZ Rhythm, um, a Rhythm Pod. Um, so he uses the haste thing. So you'll be able to catch that in a bit. Um, so for this version here, um, we've got set uh, eight mana dorks uh, at one, and then we got three walls, a scrib, and a scavenger. Um, and then the part that's quite different from this version than the other version you've been seeing around is that uh, this version runs a one of Deceiver Exarch. No Crassus at all. Um, for the combo parts here. And then it goes to Eldritch Evolution. We've been seeing a lot of 3 so this one drops it down to 2. Um, E-Wit, Reflector Mage is pretty common. Um, Renegade Rallyer is pretty common, but a Knight of Autumn in the main and then 4 Kitchen Finks is pretty unique. The other thing that's really interesting with this version is that it runs 3 Restoration Angels in the main instead of what we've been seeing, which are the Breaching Hippo Camps. This version also runs the Shalai, which is expected, but then it runs like Lena Lanja, which we don't really see right now in the main. And the Vanifiers are expected. It's running no Zealous Constructs and no Bellower. Instead, it's going with one of Revelark and two Kikis. Um, and then no Six Drops at all. And then it has the Chords, which is what we expected. Awesome. Thanks for joining, man. Um, so then... In the side here, this is pretty standard. Um, what we did was we threw in some upgrades for the creature removal and artifact hate, ancient grudges. Uh, we got Magus of the Moon because it just wins us. Being able to core that up is just insane. Oozes for the graveyard hate, trackers for the grindier matchup, Thruns for those grindy matchups along with the control. Thragtus and Huntmaster in, are in here for similar reasons. I wanted to um, be able to drop a card and get life gain and get a creature presence. Um, I've got Gaddick Teague in here um, as well. That's a card that I'm just a big fan of right now. And then two more Knight of Autumns, and then we also run the one of Kataki. Um, so we're not going to... We've been playing a couple different versions of this, so I'm sure you guys can check the other ones we have out. But So this was really interesting that they went with the Resto plan and the, all these Finks. Um, and they went 8-0 in the GP the day one. So we're going to run this in a league. How have you been, uh, Vagrant Wolf? And how is the streaming life? Oh, gotcha. Did not realize that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to limit it just the two nights a week if I do it at all. It's just, um, you know, you have to dedicate a lot of time to it, and there's time that you have to dedicate to outside of it as well. And obviously for me, work, school, and social life comes before this, but I, I have been using this mainly as a way to make myself play Magic and play a lot more of it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, the extra life. Um, I did it with my friends on their uh, podcast. Um, they did a they do a weekly thing, and we did a giant gaming session, which I thought was a lot of fun. And we've been doing that as like a trying to do that like a once a quarter or once a month thing where we get everybody together. struggles finding an opponent. <laughs> yeah, they've been trying to get this um, this podcast off the ground where they're just talking about different game things. I think that is pretty loud. Let me adjust that down.
right, we'll gladly be on the play. All right, so this hand's pretty sweet. We're gonna go turn one, um, bird into a wall, and then we have a lot of options. Ideally, we're just gonna be dropping Prime Speaker here. I'll lead off with the force, no reason to hurt ourselves yet, and uh, no reason to fetch up until we know what we're looking for. Awesome, man. Well, I'll see you when you get back. All right, still not going to try to crack this uh, wooded foothills. So I don't see much value in it, so we are going to run out this wall. And then we're just going to pass here. Now, if this is Storm and they drop a Lord, we're going to just drop out this Reflector Mage. But if it is something else, we'll drop the Vanifar. Serum. And a Slide of it. Okay. Looks like they're doing a lot of setup. Alright, so flooded here. So we don't need to necessarily crack that yet, so why don't we just bring out Vanifar and then force our opponent to answer the Vanifar or try to go off here. I always hate shipping it over to Storm. If this is Storm, but it feels like Storm. Sacred Founder here to increase our, um, our count of uh, red sources as well as getting another color. And then with the Flooded, um, we can grab either a, oh, hmm, maybe we want to grab the Steam Vents because then we can grab the Sacred Foundry with that or Temple Garden. No, I need, and yeah, no, we're gonna, we'll grab the Steam Vents here. Our turn. I want to start this off with, because we don't necessarily need it right now for anything, um, bouncing their brawl. You can see if that happens. Because then that's going to stop them from doing anything with that. And this deck isn't as focused on comboing off. Like we could go. Um, but we can, I think we can just win here. So we'll go Prime Speaker, sack the Wall of Roots, get Deceiver Exarch, untap Prime, uh, Vanifar, and then we'll use Vanifar, sack the Reflector Mage, go get ourselves a Restoration Angel, um, unt blinking the Deceiver, untap again, and then we sack the rest of get Kiki and kill. So still pretty sweet. And as long as they don't have a response, we're going to crush it. So Deceiver Exarch. And we're gonna untap permanent we control. And then sack reflector. We'll get ourselves a resto. Resto's gonna blink our deceiver. We do wanna use that ability. Come back in, untap a permanent we control. 
and then sack resto. Get ourselves a kiki. Untap. And save ourselves time. We'll save targets and we'll yield. And let's repeat this. Awesome. You got game one. Alright, so I want to bring in the oozes, the abrades, and I honestly don't mind um, our guy Teague, obviously, for passing flames and for. All right, so I want to bring in Gaddick Teague as well. Um, and then I think that's pretty much all we're going to want to bring in. We don't really need the, oh, the life gain, the tokens, or destroying enchantments, or gaining life. So I just want to bring in those five right there. And then as far as what we want to take out, I don't need the Knight of Autumn, and I don't need uh, duplicate Finxes right now. I think that's going to be fine to cut. Uh, I'm going to cut one Restoration Angel as well. So let's bring, and then we're going to cut one more card. And we're going to cut a, I think we want to cut a Noble here. And we're going to run it like that. Sorry, I got that. So this hand doesn't have a lot of interaction off the get-go, but it's got an Eldritch Evolution. So I think this is fine. It's got a lot of ramp. We can Evolution, um, and then E-Whip back to Evolution, and try to just take the game over from there. to sack our noble um, to answer them, but I think we're fine. Cool. So, we're gonna run out a wall. And I wanna be able to sack everything and play at least one of these if we needed to. Um, I'd like to be able to play the resto for sure. So why don't we go ahead and get ourselves a temple garden, get ourselves access to another green and the white here. And we are gonna shock ourselves because I wanna run out this other wall. And we're gonna pass it over. Interesting. All right. Okay, so we have a couple options here. It looks like they don't have mana, which is pretty good for us. Um, so what we could do is pass it back over to them, and then on their upkeep, we could tap down one of their thing, one of their lands with Deceiver Exarch, and then. We don't have an. Hmm. We could, uh, or just we just Eldritch Evolution away one of the walls right now. Which doesn't seem bad either. Um, getting a Gaddic Teague could be pretty strong for them. And then we could hold up Resto. 
or hold up Deceiver on their turn and then resto it. E whip back the evolution and do and that should be pretty good. Or we could play Deceiver right now, untapping one of our lands, pass it over to them, resto blank the Deceiver, tap down their land, and that might win the game because then on our turn we can just evolution for the win. But holding up mana, hmm. We have a couple. We have options. I think I think I'm fine with just passing it over to them, and then responding on their um, upkeep. Respond here with like a remand, then we'll eat their turn. So I'm gonna tap down their spire bluff. we could four mana run out resto blink deceiver untap our land and then go for the sacrifice on deceiver go get kikijiki which seems fine yeah let's do that Case we're just gonna play out a bird and then let's go for the swing. Just go for it again. So we can still Eldritch Evolution, and we could go up to five if we wanted to. Um, so some potential answers we can just grab here would just be grabbing like a Shalai so they can't target us. Or we could grab like a Gaddic Teague. I'm not opposed to grabbing Shalai if we want to sack our Deceiver. And then we could set up a little bit longer to go. Ewit into evolution 
into a Kiki and then drop a Resto, but I think that's a two turn plan. Um, where we could pass it right now and then Resto them on their turn to just try to slow them down, but I don't think we'd be doing much. And I feel like we have to try to be proactive here because if we can make them force them to put an answer on the board, um, we're going to be better off. So instead of second deceiver, why don't we sack our wild roots since we're grabbing you know, a four drop and then we'll grab Shalai. Hey sweetie, thanks for joining. Right, so we'll drop a Shalai here and then we will pass it on over. Should make our opponent's life just a little bit more difficult because they would need either another bounce spell um, right now to get things going for them. Nice, man. Glad they came in. I always hate uh, ordering cards and having to wait for them. I ordered, um, I ordered a Shalai and a um, and a reflector maze or something. I ended up buying them from one of the local stores, but like I'll have the duplicate set come in. So I don't know why I buy cards because like if I have to wait more than like a day or two, I'm just gonna end up going to the store and just buying it anyway. Plus, like, I want to support my local stores, so. Right, sorry, work. What's going on, man? All right, so we got some grave shots. us. We got plenty of mana. Yes, yeah, so, and that's that's the biggest thing. I'll check the local stores almost always first. Um, but it's definitely one of those times where, hmm, I think we're just dead here. Because we're going to bend the Mana Morphos in the Pest and Flames to prevent an extra draw from them. But they're going to be able to just ramp all this again, generate a ton of mana, and then just loot through the chain again. Because if we gave them the Mana Morphos and the Pest and Flames, if they were Mana Constructed, it would be one thing. But they already have 5 mana and then go up to 6, and then Mana Morphos will put them up to 7. go through the whole thing let them do their jam we're already up to uh, 13 they've got another desperate and then a couple cantrips and then the grape shot and then we're done Yeah, unfortunately, I think any line we would have gone there, we would have been dead. Because if we went for like a Gaddock Teague, wouldn't have done anything. Just because they had uh, the Grape Shots already in hand. And there's all the spells. All right, we're dead. Um, so I don't think we're gonna make any changes to our list. So we'll run it.
Yeah, some of the like, more obscure cards I always find like it's the worst, so that's why I always have to end up going online. Okay, so this hand's a little awkward because we're a little mana starved because we only have one land, but it does have the uh, Braid and the Ooze. And if we get another land, we might have to be able to utilize that evolution. So we're going to keep this. Pass it on over. Yeah, any card that's never been reprinted is always the worst. Awesome, we're amazing at this game. Land. All right, so we're gonna run out the ooze here. Let's pass it over. We're in a pretty decent spot right now. Ooze can start eating up all of our spells, and if they drop a lord, we can just abrade it. All right, there's the lord. So we'll go ahead and eat their serum. And then pass it our way. Alright. I don't mind shocking myself here. And then we're going to upgrade the Brawl. And then we're going to eat that Brawl. And then we're going to beat them up. I'm never punished. I'm a Tron player. Whatever I need on top of the deck, it's always there. Right, Electromancer. There's nothing else of Revelants to eat. Okay. Question right now is if we want to evolution. I don't mind it. I want to keep the ooze though, so we'd have to evolution away the, either the bird or the noble. We can go get ourselves a three drop. We could go get um, Gaddic Teague um, and prevent them from prevent them from being able to cast gifts or paths, and then require them to answer it. Um, or we can go get Reflector Mage. So we didn't board that out. Reflector Mage. And then just bounce their Electromancer, um, hold them off another turn, and then go from there and see what we come up with. Either way, though, I think what we're going to be doing is running out this Noble. So why don't we run it out and beat them for four? solid there I really like the idea of just sacking away this noble and getting a reflector mage um, can we do more though Gattacteed's not bad but reflector will be guaranteeing that they have to get in the you know drop another source here so I think we're into that because that seems like the more proactive answer it makes them they can't do anything next turn with their lord and then we can do it the next turn um, i'm gonna sack the bird possibly here because the noble might be relevant for the single swing but if we're getting reflector mage we're going to be getting two damage anyway and if that's the case we'd rather have the extra source here that can be of any color so let's sack the noble And I'm not forgetting anything. So let's get Reflector, bounce it, and we'll pass it their way.
Okay. And for anyone that's joining me for the first time here, I'm uh, Voodoo. I try to stream every Sunday night and Wednesday night right now from 6 till 10 p.m. Uh, I do try to post all of my videos on um, my YouTube and on here as well. I'm just getting started, so if you guys ever want to see anything improved, just I'm more than happy to take any suggestions. Um, okay, we can swing with Ooze here. And then I think uh, Ooze and Reflector here. Hit them for five. I don't even mind just passing here because our, our options are either play Vanifar, tap ourselves out, pass back to them, and then they can just go off. Um, we could play a bird, and then we only can eat two things, but it doesn't accelerate our clock if we play the bird. So I'd rather just pass it them. We have the option of eating three things, and then if necessary, um, and they pass it back to us, we can eat our noble and make our uh, ooze one bigger. Ideally here, we don't have to tap the groves to give them the extra point of life. Um, because then our clock's gonna disappear. So we'll see how this plays out. How would I rank the three iterations of Tron? Are we talking mono green Tron, green red Tron, green black Tron, green white Tron, Eldrazi Tron? Or are we talking like just the mono green versions and the variants, then E Tron and then mono blue Tron? as far as if I'm ranking them. Okay. If I'm ranking between E-Tron, Blue-Tron, and Mono green tron I think um, Mono green tron or the variants, the green X-Tron, I think that's definitely the strongest version. Um, it's extremely resilient. It does what it's, uh, it's supposed to do very, very well. Um, so I would put that right at the top, and I think you should be playing Mono Green right now. I don't think I don't see there's a reason to play the other versions. The after that, um, I would probably put Mono Blue Tron up there because E Tron is such a meta deck. So like it's only going to be at the top when um, Chalice is at a premium. So if Chalice isn't at a premium, no one's going to want to play that deck. So I think that's the situation that. Etron's at. Um, if Chalice is ever back to being top dog, then I think you'll see Etron rise at the very least above Mono Blue Tron um, and possibly see if it can catch Mono Green Tron. So. Our opponent's definitely trying to just go off here, so I definitely like the fact that we held um, our Ooze's uh, activations off, so it makes them have to consider how they want to approach this. And they also did themselves a little bit of damage. Alright, so doing four shots. So let's see where they send all the triggers. They have to send them... If they send just three to ooze for some reason, then we're going to be great. We'll just eat our noble. They should send all of it to... Oh, okay, yeah. They're sending all of it to ooze. So at that point, all we're going to want to do here is eat their pyretics and their metamorphos. see if that was good enough to hold them off. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you even get, I guess, for a foil smasher right now if you're trying to unload them? Because I can't imagine it's worth too much. has blue and red in the pool and they can tap for a shivan reef i'm expecting like a standard pyretic 
uh, dual ritual pile, metamorphose, and past and flames. Okay, no past in flames. Oh, I imagine they have the, it in hand then, if that's the case. And I think that means no matter what. So if we give them the two rituals, they just go ritual, ritual, and they, if they have it in hand, they win. Um, if we give them the Manamorphose and the Grape Shot, they can go Manamorphose up to three, cast Past and Flames, and then have the one mana to start the whole chain up again. So with that being the case, I'd rather give them the Rituals because if they don't have it in hand, we're giving them an extra draw. So let's bend these two. There's the past in flames, and this is over, unfortunately. All right, so that was a bummer. That was pretty close. Yeah, and we're just jamming Vanifar Pod today. Um, I want to play this version with the Four Finks and Restos, and then I'm going to be jamming the Rhythm version. Um, my friend Reese really wanted to see that version, so we're going to check that out. I would like to go first. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will keep this. We've got an accelerator, we've got a combo piece, and we've got the ability to find everything. So uh, we're going to start off with a... So we don't have to necessarily get the red source in this deck, because this the only thing in this deck that's red is Kiki Jiki. And because I'm growing in blind here, I'm just going to grab a force. Because we might have to return that to our hand a bunch of times with this Red Ranger, and I don't want to have to shock ourselves every time. Okay, so that's Utopia Sprawl, um, so they're probably on Ponza. Uh, so we have the option of either running out Finks right now or Deceiver, and I like just shocking ourselves, and then we're going to tap down that Force and Utopia Sprawl on their turn. Oh my gosh, they're going to bolt our bird. What kind of monster are they? Yeah, rhythm. Uh, it's a... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a rhythm list that uh, Reese really wanted to see. Okay, so we're going to run out Scrib Ranger here. And we're just going to beat them with the Deceiver. Evolution here, or we can Vanifar here. If we Vanifar, 
Um, our opponent will probably swing at us for two in the air and then sh sack them both, take out Vanifar. Um, if we evolution here, we can go get ourselves a Resto, a Shalai. Shalai just dies anyway. We could go get a Kiki Jiki. That doesn't seem to do much. We could get a Revelark, and then if they kill it, we'd be able to bring back the birds and the Deceiver. Um,. I am drinking um, Eagle Rare. It's uh, one of my favorite bourbons. Hmm. I honestly like getting the Revelark to put a threat out there and then it recurs our, th our items if we need it. So. We could go get another forest in case they are on the Blood Moon, but we've got one green source and we can return it if necessary. Um, mm, we don't need the... Yeah, I really just am trying to prevent damage, I guess, right now. So, we're going to do this. And... Sack the Deceiver. Go get Revelark and just hold that up. Depending on what our opponent does here, I'd really like to get Vanifar and play on our turn. If they want to swing both, I'll block one with a, a Revelark, and if they want to shoot it, it's the same result anyway. But maybe not. Let's see what they got. They got a Bloodbraid Elf into an Ooze. Oh, our opponent's so rude. Alright, they can eat one of our things. There goes the Seeker Exarch. We knew you well. What's this? Alright, evolution. It is unfortunate that it just ate that, because we could have sacked our Revelar, triggered, got back the Deceiver. And then got a, uh, a, ki a Kijiki. <laughs> um, we can. I think what we're going to do here is we're going to swing with the Revelark, and then we'll untap it with Script Ranger, um, tapping up the mana necessary, and then we'll drop our, um, our Vanifar. Worst case scenario here, they chump block it, so that's fine. We get rid of, rid of one of the ways they can uh, instant speed shoot something down. So that, we're gonna untap that, return our force, play the force, and drop Prime Speaker. And we'll pass it over. I would imagine they want to kill the Prime Speaker, but they might want to wait to see what we do before they do that. Six mana, that's a Titan. Oh, a Glory Bringer. Okay. Well, that also works. Um, and if they want to kill our Prime Speaker, let's see if they do that. Because if they do, we'll just block with Revelar. Well, they do. Okay. They can just eat it with Ooze. So that's unfortunate. But we could trade with a Glory Bringer. Is trading with a glory bringer even worth it? That seems really low value. Because it's gonna be untapped next turn, so why don't we hold off one more? Okay. So we are in 
a similar spot again. I may just want to drop another Vanifar and force him to answer it again. And without us drawing another land, I think that's where we're going to be at. We could e whip back a land and just play that land, but I don't know. I'd rather just get some free damage in here if they're not going to block us, and then if they do, I think we're fine with that because we'd rather get rid of that once again. So. Damage in, we're gonna tap this, untap that. See, obviously, they should be playing a Scrib Ranger so they can untap that Glory Bringer. Oh, that's making mistakes. Don't you buy it. People understand the power of that Scrib Ranger. That's Alright, let's see what they got for us. Gone, but they don't have any mana. Okay. Let's see what our options are. We could drop the groves. Um, e whip. Back of Banifar. Or we could use the evolution after we swing here with the Rebel Arc and then bring back the Vanifar and the birds. And then um, what would we even get? Get a Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki would die to the Glory Bringer. If we drop a Finx, we'd be chump walking, they'd be eating the Finx. And then next turn, we don't have the option to bring anything back with Rebel Arc because they'll eat both of our threats because right now they have the mana tap. So if we don't do evolution now, it seems like we're not going to be able to do it later. Um, so with that being the case, we can try to race them a little bit, right? We could uh, do this. Yeah. So we're going to swing with the Rebel Arc. Evolution away the Rebel Arc. Bring back our Prime Speaker and our Bird. Alright, so here, this is where our options come in. We've got, we could ref, Reflector, their Glory Bringer. Um, and then that way our Vanifar would stay alive unless they draw something else. And then try to win the next turn through that. Um, drop a Glen Lodge, it doesn't seem that great. If we counter one thing, they can eat it with the ooze. Yeah, I, see, I feel like our best option here is actually Reflector Mage and just bouncing their Glory Bringer. So. There is not another Revel Arc to grab. We just have the one of Revel Arc um, in the five slot, and then um, pass. Um, and then a two Kikis. Having a body double would have been fun. Being able to copy a Revel Arc, but.
All right, so if opponent doesn't deal with Prime Speaker here, we should just win. Sprawl's fine. Storm Breath, okay. I don't think we need to block, and I'd rather have the extra mana, so we're just going to take it. And the fact that they only have one green open means we can go off. Okay, we got a resto. We can sack away the scrib. We can... Tap for mana, tap for mana, uh, sack away the scrib uh, after we untap the land in, I mean, bounce the land in, the bird. Um, go get Deceiver Exarch, untap Prime Speaker, and then cast Resto, and then sack it away for Kiki Jiki, and that should be game. Oh wait, oh my gosh, I forgot, we only have one deceiver, that was a mistake. Okay, still not bad, because what we're going to do here is grab Renegade Rallyer. Renegade Rallyer is going to bring back Scrib, Scrib's going to untap Vanifar, Vanif and then we're going to sack away the Rallyer. Um, uh, but we can't untap again, oh my gosh, there's only, this is the reason I was really mad at this list to be honest, that it only ran one deceiver, and the resto can't untap it so because it, it doesn't run breaching ah uh, i've been so used to the not the other version of this deck okay um are we still fine here okay so we can get rally or bring back scrib Scrib can untap Prime Speaker and then sack away Scrib, cast our other resto, blinking the Renegade, get back Scrib again, then sack away the, the second resto for a Kiki. I think that works. So, Rallyer here. Rallyer brings back Scrib. They eat it. Okay. Opponent's rude. Ugh, not having a Crassus or a Deceiver really hurts us. Okay, so we can just Finks here then. And then hold up Resto, because they're going to Storm Breath us. And then we drop down Resto. And uh, blink it and then try to go off next turn. Gosh, I'm blown away they only run a one of. But, okay. That's where we're at, so. Gosh. So we're playing this main deck as is, um, of what we received at the. Already, I feel like I would want to cut one Finks for another Deceiver or a Crassus, but that's neither here nor there at this point. So, I'm going to pass it over. We've got a Resto held up. Let's see what they got for us. I'm imagining they just dropped the other Dragon, and then they're going to swing, try to shoot something down. Nope, they're going to go Tracker. Okay. It's a bit grindier of a plan. That's okay. Get their... And then they sack this and go get the other Dragon. Because we can survive through this swing. And we'll try to just protect our Vanifar from their swing. They can't monstrous this, right? Seven. They got one, two, three, four, five. 
sure. You got it, opponent. Drop this. Resto. Blink the Phoenix. Gain some extra life. Or we could blink the Reflector and get rid of their dragon. That doesn't really seem worth it. Sack Arresto for a key key. That doesn't really get us anywhere though. Key key can just bounce things and react things. I'd like to kill them this turn. They've got one unknown in hand that I can draw one card. Got no relevant. We can gain some more life. We can get a Shalai. Shalai can start pumping our board. Mm. Ewit would just be doing it for a three drop into a four drop because they'll eat whatever we grab. Playing our own ooze isn't that worth it. We can swing at them for three with Resto. Four if we sh played Noble. Yeah, we can't continue this chain. We could go get a Glenalandra off the Finks just for a double blocker. And it can counter anything, and then the next turn we would win. Hmm. Not opposed to that, and we'd have a bunch of life. Can't sack the bird. I mean, we'd have to hold up the bird for one counter, hollow for the other counter. Alternatively, we can just sack the Finx, go get a resto, blink the Finx again, gain four life. Just go really hard on the life game plan. Or we can blink our resto, get rid of their uh, one dragon. That way they're down to just being able to cast one dragon on their turn. They can't monstrous it. Ten life seems pretty worthwhile. And we can have double blockers if we really wanted to. Yep, we're going to run out noble. Let's, uh, let's swing at them for four. Sack. Sack our Finks. Gain two more life. Go to ten. Oh, you're right. Good call. We cannot bounce it. Okay. So we're going to get the Glenalandra here. I forgot this, this, this dragon has protection white. The other one did not. Much appreciated. Okay. So, just gonna grab the Glenalandra. That way we have a guaranteed two blocks with one counter. 
and then we're just going to pass. Shoot Glenelandra once, that's fine. They're gonna eat it. Okay. Oh, they're gonna shoot the other one and then cast the other dragon, and that's when you kill us. Navigation on that cost us the game. I thought I had the win, and I uh, did not check uh, the whole second deceiver because then we we could have gone a very different route with our first sack, and we would have been okay. But because of that, we definitely got punished. Oh man. Okay, I want to bring in the knights here because I want to be able to blow up their enchantments and hold them off. Um, Hold them off their Utopia Sprawls or the Blood Moons and take out their creatures if necessary. Um, there's a good chance we're just going to be on the like a beatdown plan here. Because they have a good amount of removal and I expect them to bring more in. Uh, I don't care about the ooze here. And. I'm gonna go down to one Kiki. I feel like we want to bring in the trackers just because it's gonna be a really strong threat all by itself. Yeah, that ooze did so much work to us. Uh, I do want to bring in the abrades as well. Because we're bringing in the Knights of Autumn here, and we're loading up our free drop quite a bit, so I'm going to trim two Finks. And uh, I'm going to trim... The Glenelandra is kind of awkward, because I want it out there, because it can counter a lot of relevant things. But it's it's also really high in cost, and by the time it gets down, I don't think it's going to be saving like our creatures. But I still want to keep a I guess I don't mind the one-off, in case we can catch like uh, Anger. And then, why don't we trim a Mana Dork and a Cord? Alright, this hand has a one lander, not the color we want, no Mana Dork, so we cannot keep this. Uh, this is a one lander. <laughs> um, I th this is kind of sketch, I'll be honest with you guys. But why don't we keep that? Oh, we got another land on top. We're pro magic players. Utopia, okay. They even got a Tomat's Crypt for us. Um, we're gonna run down this track. for five and then abrading the arbor elf um, to keep them at a lower mana count 
Alternatively, we can Eldritch Evolution, and we could go get a Kiki's not good, Resto's not good. Hmm, not really that much I want to grab right now. I'd love to get another land. The uh. <sighs> We could go get a Night of Autumn. And then the Night of Autumn blowing up their Utopia is probably to slow down on their mana generation that way. But I feel like just casting a Braid does the same thing right now, so. Why don't we just drop this one over? Swing for five. If they blood braid into like anger here, okay. Thank gosh. <laughs> All right, Night of Autumn. Not the worst. We can get rid of their Utopia Sprawl, reducing their mana generation again, keeping them at four mana, maybe five, or we can. Swing for five, see if they want to trade their ooze and their blood braid elf first. Yeah, we're gonna do that. they can definitely get their ooze bigger um, and make it go out of control if that's the plan they want to be on though I think that's fine with us because we could just run out Vanifar right now force him to answer it BBE into dorks is the way it's meant to be right you're just ramping on a super fast level. Rabble Master. Rabble Master's dope. Okay, uh, I don't think there's anything they can do to punish us, right? But, um, no, they haven't played in the land yet, so I'm, I don't want to get bolted. a clue. <clears throat> okay, we can Night of Autumn blow up their sprawl. And then sack the Night of Autumn. If we sack the Tyler's Tracker, we could blink the Night of Autumn and turn it into a bigger threat. Um, we're one mana short of just winning here, from what I can tell. Because if we would have had another mana, we could have been able to uh, cast Night of Autumn and Eldritch Evolution and win the game. Because we, yeah. So let's uh, let's speed up this clock here, because I am taking a long time to do things. And it's gonna make us lose. Solid spot here. We just gotta speed up our 
play style, it's play speed. That is one thing I'm still getting used to. Alright, land here. We can go. third game we got like four minutes we got this <laughs> Super fast. So what do you guys think about how modern's shaking up after the KCI ban? Alright, we're on a one lander here with not much going on, so we're gonna mall. And we've got a bird and two mana fire. We got it. It's fine. Right on top. We're good with that. Utopia is fine. Bird and pass. to fetch up a hollow found so we get access to white and blue off of our lands and we're just gonna be running out a vanifar in this turn more likely than not mm, that's a blood move okay i still want to run out the vanifar Okay. Good thing we have a backup. Alright, Blood Braid Elf into a Legion of War boss. That's good value. the tracker and I want to go get a July and we're gonna pass it and we're gonna run another tracker we're gonna select this tracker for a resto blink that Sack this, go get the Kiki, 
Kiki's gonna untap Resto. Oof! Our opponent's so nice, they conceded to us. <laughs> oh. I'm sure we would be able to click through it in time, but still. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was uh, some close magic. So how's everybody night? Uh, how is everybody's night going? Did you guys uh, make it through the what is it third st winter storm we've had so far? Okay. We're so good at that. Oh, this hand's so close. I don't think we can keep it though. We have just too many four drops. Uh, this hand's solid. Another fang sure. We'll take that. Any graveyard deck we're around lose. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna start jamming thanks. Noble spirits probably then. Spirits match if I haven't played it. I feel like Caller is a beating. I think we're just on the Finx plan. to white mana and I wouldn't mind access to blue mana um, is where I'm at I think we're gonna just hold the land we don't need the life right now so let's just hold it and we're gonna swing and most likely I'm just gonna be running up ooze okay they got a cocoa Two drug skulls. That's rough. <laughs> One drug skull's five, but two. Oh man. Okay. Now we can cord for three here. I don't think it does anything. I'd like to cord for four if possible so we can get like a resto and bounce the Fanx, gain some more life, and then have a solid blocker. Um, Shalai would start to let us take overtaking the game as well, so let's just run out our ooze and pass it over. Next turn's going to hurt. How are they gonna hit two draw skulls? It's ridiculous. For everybody that's just joining us, we're playing Vanifar Pod. We're playing that recent uh, eight-o list with Channel Fireball that had like four Finks and um, triple Resto in it. 
Um, it only lo listed the main deck, so we did put together the sideboard. Um, this is our third match, and we're one on one right now. I'm gonna take the hit here. I don't want to block with our bird quite yet. Okay, reflector mage. What are they bouncing? They're bouncing the ooze. I think I'm fine with that. All right, thanks. I think we're gonna have to sack this because I want to be able to um, block with the bird if necessary. And we're starting to race here quite a bit, so I'm gonna grab the forest. And we're just gonna pass it on over. If they play another Lord, we could go to one. Because this would be five, five, and then four. If they play two Lords, we'll have to block with the bird. Yeah, I am planning on uh, playing in Frankenmuth. I'm probably playing one of the variations of the pod deck. Um, on Sunday, I gotta actually talk to the group I'm heading with and work out the arrangements on the vehicle and registrations and all that stuff. But yeah, I'll be heading out on Sunday at like what is it, like six in the morning, seven in the morning to get there in time. All right, I'm still not gonna block here. land here so we can court for five now so we could grab like a revlard but that doesn't do anything um, if we can untap with a shalai that would be great but I think what we're gonna have to do is just pass and all right so if we just pass here we're gonna cord for four and then try to go to if we can double block by cording to four blocking the resto on the supreme and then the bird on the drug skull well that's no good for us can we even stay alive now hmm okay so the most we can do is block two creatures. Okay. We'd have to use the Flooded Strand. Um, tap down everything but the bird. Resto. And then try to do it from there. That's not putting us in a great spot at all. Oh. <sighs> I have to grab that. All right, so we can cord for one, two, three, four. If we tap everything but the Finks down, um, get the resto, blink the, use the resto to blink a Finks. We'd lose the resto and the bird though, and then I don't know how we would come back from that. Getting any of the other life gain creatures so it doesn't block. I think we're just dead here. We can stay alive, but... Don't know if it's the kind of life we want to live. Blink, gain life, 
little blocks, a block here and here. Go to one. Uh, can't rally her. We can court again for four, but that's still that does that doesn't do anything for us, unfortunately. So that's game. Oof. Okay. So I like a braids here to take out their high threats at the top end. I mean, their threats just in general. Um, ooze seems pretty low quality here. Um, maybe a mag, I guess? That seems like we're kind of hedging a bit. Yeah, I think I just want to bring in the abrades. And then Night of Autumn, I think I'd be fine with trimming, but I, I kind of want to keep one of them in there because people do seem to bring... Well, they can't bring in Graft Digger's Cage because they're playing Graft Digger's... No, they're playing Cobra. No, they could, I guess. Yeah, they, they don't have to search. No, they, they, they wouldn't. That's, that's a ridiculous thought that they would do that. So we're just going to do that. We're going to trim the knight, and it's uh, one ooze for two upgrades. You want to bring in the magus? Okay. Uh, I don't mind bringing in the magus. Um, if we bring in the magus, I really have a hard time. I, I think we want to keep all of our dwarfs in this matchup. I think I don't want to just cut a Finks if we're going to bring that in. So cut a three drop for a three drop. Okay, we got no land, so we're going to go ahead and ship that. This is a one lander with two three drops, one of which is a Finks, which would be great to evolution into a Kiki and then drop the Resto. Seems worth it, right? See if we can get some luck going and then we can just crush him with uh, some infinite angels. It's fine. This is good, guys. Hmm, <laughs> Noble on top. Hmm, not quite what we're looking for, but I think we're going to keep it because it is the guarantee. Oh, no, we're, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're fetching. Um, we're going to grab the temple garden here because I want to have access to white if necessary. Some vials. Evolution. Okay. That's rough. We're just gonna swing here. It's it's gonna finally happen. We're not gonna see that other land. If we get one land though, we're gonna go Finks into Evolution. Um, and if we draw another land, it's Resto win. If not, it's Evolution win. <laughs> I'll mess the sound just a little bit. Was that 10 previously? Okay, let's see how that is. Let me know if that's too low or too loud for you guys. Another vial. If they don't want to cast up, it's fine with me, but we gotta get some land, so I'm gonna pass. Oh yeah, Galactus give me plus 16 viewers. That is amazing. Much appreciated, Galactic. I think Galactic Toys is like where I spend almost all of my time as far as playing Magic right now too. Because I cannot play on any other night and it's where I will play if I can. Are you guys playing Standard tonight there? So here is where I find myself in an odd spot with Evolution because if I sack um, a creature with it and they quell me, it's really rough.
Oof, 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 oof. What do they got for us? Lord? Oh, they're gonna copy a noble? That's interesting. Just want the mana. They probably got Coco. Coming up. Alrighty. Are they just gonna pass here and leave a double vial and a Coco? Or do they actually wanna cast it right now? Okay, they're gonna cast it right now. They're gonna reflect her us? That's so sad. Why would they do this to us? Possibly a wanderer. Ooh, or they could bounce. Oh, they are. They're gonna bounce our noble. Alright, I would like to. I don't even know what I want. I don't even want anything really. Can't play our noble. Uh, we're just gonna swing. Here. If they want to trade with a reflector, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. Containment Priest. We haven't seen much out of Containment Priest in Modern. Right? Thinking of the right card? Yeah. Okay. We win, because that's a commander, right? Containment Priest is Flash. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield, if it wasn't cast, exile it instead. to feel some pain. All right, I feel like they're doing the tempo thing much better than us right now. And we're dying because of it. I'd like to wall here into a noble. They're going to quell us. Which means we're dead in the sky. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they're gonna Coco? They're gonna hit like two more lords. Watch. Hit two more lords and crush us. There's one. Oh, not, not another lord, but I mean, not two lords, but just one. They're reasonable. And we're dead. We lived a good life. Oof, okay. We're going into match four. Playing Vanifar Pod. One and two currently. That's an interesting card. Like it would, it'd be really strong for like the Taxus deck, right? Like that's that's something that they would just love to have. Okay, mana dorks into Finks and Cord. I think this is good enough for us to keep. So, were chalice. 
Okay. Hopefully, okay, they didn't get another um, mana source out or anything like that. It's a chalice on turn one. So, we gotta get out our dork now. Because they're gonna counter it. We get out our dork anyway, but. Glass, okay. They don't even want to go chalice. That's interesting. See if they know enough off of this to stop our combo or stop Vanifar. There goes Vanifar. Okay. So if we run out the Noble this turn, Chalice won't affect it. If we throw out things, we're going to start pressuring them more. Um, I like the idea of pressuring them more right now. So when we sack this, life's not really that important in this matchup. And we're going to go get the missing colors here for us, which would be the Hollow Fountain. Pay the life. And we're gonna run out our finks. Okay, they got their Wincon, their Rivulet. Are they just going to Chalice on one and pass? Nope, EE on one. <laughs> They're going to EE on one. Definitely don't want to run out our noble. Hmm. They want spire. They have a spire in hand and a chalice in hand. We could cord for two. I'd like to cord for three to get a Knight of Autumn. Which would require us to run out our creatures. I'm just going to run out this, um, this Reflector Mage here. It's not going to be doing much. It's just another creature for us to have out there. And sack to like an Eldritch Evolution if we needed to. Why do you think it would um, help the format a ton uh, bringing Containment Priest into the format? So if we don't swing here, we can cord for four. I like the idea of just going to combat and seeing if they respond to it. See if they respond with uh, war or anything. Okay.
four for three. We can right now go chord for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So chord for four. They're gonna go get their we can't swing business. We can blow it up though. If we chord for three and then swing for three. Is that even worth it? We're going to be gaining them two life to do this. Hmm. Getting it in play though means like resto just becomes really strong. So, yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Pass it over. All right, so it's because it stops Vile, Coco, Yard Tricks. Um, like name a top deck that casts its threat. Hmm. I mean, you're right. I mean, like to an extent, everybody's trying to cheat something into play. Tron cast its threats. <laughs> Just gonna pass it over here. Don't wanna eat and blow up our bird. They can and we'll play the noble if they don't chalice. Cool. Got that game. Alright, so we don't need the creature interaction here. And I don't care as much about the life. I want to bring in Kataki. I want to bring in the Knights. Um, I don't mind bringing in Gaddock T, to be honest. It stops our cord, but um, seems pretty strong. Magus seems great, too, honestly, because we're able to interact with them and stop their um, ability to, like, Rivulet or land us out of the game. That is a lot I want to bring in. We could get rid of another Finx. And then... Shalai should be hard for them to start milling us or targeting us, but... I think we can trim one Kiki. I want to keep the Restos, because they're going to be really good with the Knight of Autumns. Um, I'd like to keep the cords here because I want to just be able to either find the Knight of Autumn or the, or the Kataki uh, as soon as we can. I want to, I wanted to keep Scavenging Ooze because it stops their one combo, but I guess it seems it's a little... It only stops one part of it. So we can run it like that and cut like one Noble here. Let's try it like that. You like Huntmaster because the flip? I don't know. Like Huntmaster is good in like those grindier matchups because he can go get the um, the artifact that makes it so he can't be the target. Oh man, this hand would be so good if we had a red source. But this hand doesn't do anything for till turn four right now. Uh, I don't think we can keep this. All right, this hand's sweet. This hand's really sweet. <laughs> We're not gonna fetch here because I really want that um, Knight of Autumn. Well, we'll draw it. Never mind. We'll draw it. I'm done. Okay, they got double welding jars.
That's fair. I don't know. I don't know if the two damage is necessarily worth it though. We're gonna go flooded strand and pass here. That's most that flooded strand is most likely gonna be getting us a uh, a Mahalo fountain. We're gonna play this Groves and pass it over. <laughs> All right, snaring bridge. We're gonna start blowing it up. Try to blow it up again. We generate again, and then next turn we can we'll have we'll be able to do Knight of Autumn and Stomping Ground. So I think we should be able to get rid of uh, the Staring Bridge, and we'll get rid of that Glimmer Void. But let's see how good we are. Pyrite's fine. Let's see if they want to do anything to us. Swing. Alright, they're still at two right now. They can Academy Ruins back the Ensnaring Bridge as much as they want. So right now, why don't we run out the wall and we can hold up Ancient Grudge for whatever we want. And we'll just pass it on over. Okay, so if they want to blow up our Knight of Autumn here, I think we are going to grudge their ensnaring bridge. get a sacred foundry and that is a prime speaker which is fantastic um not that I we don't have a way to take out the academy runes we do have a way to deal with the lands, but I mean the things in the graveyard, but we cut the oozes, so I didn't think it was as necessary because we're just blowing up everything, but that may have been a mistake, obviously. But we're going to be in a pretty decent spot here, I think. Monstical Bottled Cloister. Why don't we, well, I want to make sure we can get to our red source if we need it, so no matter what. All right, I want to get rid of that Bottled Cloister. All right, then we can add a mana, run out this bird. They've got no cards and a sigh. How do we want to go from here? Okay, they're just going to concede. <laughs> Not even an issue. It's fine. I'm all out.
or this hand's solid. We're gonna be able to go noble into wall into Vanifar with a Corda and a Reflector. Don't want to hurt myself quite yet. Works out well, I suppose. I'm only allowed to consume calories for another 15 minutes. wall. And then no damage and pass it over. That's always the best answer, right? Why stop them when you can just kill them? Oh my gosh, they're gonna upbraid us. Little did they know. We're going to run out this mana far. Reese, if you weren't aware, we are playing your list next. Your um, The list you sent me earlier. Run out the Sphinx. Okay, they're just gonna concede. So, with a brain, a cantrip, do you guys think that they're on um, an odd hand of Phoenix here? I don't. I don't think it's um, Storm. Because I'd be pretty amazed if they played a Braid main. So I feel like we should be sideboarding as though they are um, Phoenix. You think it's Blue Moon? Okay. Okay. If it's Blue Moon, I want Gaddic Teague. The knights don't seem bad. Cut the scavenging ooze. Bring in the Gaddock for sure. I don't necessarily need the Finks, or as many of them. And I bring in the knights. Is there anything else we'd want? I don't think we if they're on if they're on Blue Moon, I don't think we need oozes. Um we could bring in the Thrag Tusks, the Thruns, the trackers for more of a controlly, normal control matchup. Um they should um, honestly they they'll have a hard time um dealing with it if we can just get our current plan out into play. So I think let's run it like this, and if they are just happen to be more of a control deck, then we'll consider bringing these five in afterwards. Okay, we've got no lands, so we're going to just go ahead and ship that. Uh, this hand doesn't actually do anything, so we can't keep this. And uh, this is uh, where we're at in life. And uh, cord. Hmm. Do we want a cord? I don't think we want a cord, to be honest. And this wooded foothills is going to find us a forest. Run out our noble and we'll pass it over. That we will run out a wall. Spell snare. Okay. Yeah, 
because we're going to go blue here. Why don't we get the rest of our sources? And we're going to try to run out Banner Fire. And the reason I kept in this Reflector Mage, by the way, was um, the one thing we didn't want to do was draw it. If we can cord it in instant speed, we can bounce like their Emicral off of a um, Further Breach. But, all right, they're going to counter that. So it's, it's really unfortunate that we drew the one of Reflector, but it's fine. What can you do? Oh, my gosh. I give them this nothing. All right, we're gonna run up this reflector just because I want a creature in case we get a um, Eldritch Evolution. Now we're gonna get through the breached. There's passing. <laughs> I'm gonna give him the old beat down. Oh my gosh, that's a bolt. We got one more force, I believe. Yep. Okay. We're gonna run out this Rebel Arc. Pass it on over. Opt. Oh man, another opt. Thing in the ice. Come on, Rebel Arc. Opponent's so mean. We're gonna on our turn. We're gonna ewit in to try to get that uh, rebel arc back. Click us. Sure. Why not? How dare they take the one card we wanted? Okay, so we can run out both the Finx and the Knight of Autumn here if we wanted to, um, which I think is fine. Because if they bounce it with the thing in the ice, that's okay because we're just going to get more life and then get it back. And then we're going to gain a bunch of life right now. I don't think, well, so adding the counters is kind of awkward because <sighs> if we add the counters, it's just a 4-3 and they can still die to Bolt, which, but it could swing through the thing in the ice, I guess, so that's, that's fine. Just gain 4? Okay. We got punished. They're going to have a 7-8, and then they're going to swing at us, and then they're going to click us on our turn. That's going to feel real bad. At least we have chump blockers for days, right? Like, that's... That's what really matters in life.
I think we're going to tr um, chump the Awoken with the Noble and then block the Vendidian Click with our Glenelandra here. Oh, do they have a Cryptic? Okay. We did. Okay, okay. So with them having things in the ice, I want to bring in the, the throne for sure. And I think that's probably all we're going to bring in. I'm going to think I'm going to take out one key key and bring in a throne. All right, this hand's a little bit slower, but it's got a lot of quality spells with it, so I think we're gonna keep it. Because we can go Finx into Resto, or Finx into Prime Speaker here, and hopefully that'll be enough to win us the game. I'm gonna grab a white source off of this. Hollow Fallen will play that tapped. Yeah, if we would have game four, we would have been at uh, two after they did that. They probably wouldn't have done that play though. Then I guess we would have just traded with the Glen and. Yeah. I just want to run out the things here. Foothills, and I'm just gonna swing. Hold up, um, hold up, Restoration Angel. swing here I'm gonna go for grabbing a forest and then um, running out the resto if they want to burn a counter here that should mean that we'll be able to get our Vanifar out they're bolting our resto are they bolting another one? Oh, the snapcaster bolt sure Oof, a burst lightning kicked. Uh, I want to keep the creature here because we are going to have a Vanifar still, so. We have all the Vanifars. It is just not an issue for us to have this card. Alright, they're gonna get rid of the 
things. I think we're gonna run out our noble. Take it out the way. I think the main two drop that's relevant here. We we got rid of the ooze already, so we can bring in a Gattic. We brought in Gattic Teague, right? Yeah. So I think we're just gonna go fetch up a Gaddic Teague. Alternatively, we can get a Wall of Roots. No, Gaddic Teague. I like Gaddic Teague here. And then we're gonna drop a bird. This forces them to deal with the Teague. Um, it does shut off our cord for now, but they'll want to kill this Teague, take another burn spell out of their hand. I'm sure they're going to bolt it right now. Yeah. So that's fine. Still just swinging with some snaps. Are they gonna snap? No, I think they have them now. Like, I'm gonna be amazed if they snap again. We'll take that. Wooded here. I wanna hold the force in our deck because it's gonna be pretty relevant here when we, um, if they, when they feel the ruin us. I like to cord so we can cord for three with the bird and then we could just get a Finx, sack it and then go get a restoration angel blinking the Finx. gonna sack our bird and we can get a scrub ranger scrub ranger can untap bounce that and then we'll sack away the scrub ranger we could rally or bring back the scrub untap it one more time and then Rally her into Scrib, untap, sack the Scrib into a Deceiver, untap, sack the Rallyer into Resto, untap, sack the Resto into Kiki, win. scooped <laughs> they didn't even see if we have the combo still <laughs> victory okay i need to see what is the difference between this list and the other list i am going to take a quick bathroom break and then we're going to find that list and then we're going to run into another league okay so i'll be back in just a bit <laughs> 